The world's most powerful internet company decided to close its search engine in its largest market, some 384 million users, and move it offshore to Hong Kong. The break came when Google announced it had stopped censoring its search services, which automatically meant the Chinese government would ban it from operating inside the country. The dispute began in January when Google said hackers in China were spying on the email accounts of human rights activists and threatened to suspend the government-ordered censorship. Beijing insisted the censorship, including references to the Tiananmen massacre and Tibet protests, had to stay and accused Google of politicizing the issue. But even the government has been surprised at the backlash from its own citizens. I am a Chinese, says blogger Michael Zhao, but I'm also a Google man. Zhao, who says he spends 16 hours a day working online as a journalist, discovered the power of internet freedom during a year's study in Harvard in 2007. Without Google, he says, I cannot live a modern life. The Chinese government has been increasing attacks on internet freedom since last year. Sites like Twitter, Facebook and YouTube are blocked, while other American online firms struggle to turn a profit. Google may not be making a lot of money here, but with such enormous growth potential, the company really didn't want to leave China. But with Chinese cyber attacks against U.S. networks increasing so rapidly, Google decided it didn't have a choice. One thing that to learn out of the Google experience is no company, no matter how advanced it is, and Google's one of the most advanced in the world, is safe against this kind of attack. Some 20 other companies were also attacked at the same time as Google. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton demanded a full investigation by the Chinese authorities. And many U.S. firms are now asking what the real costs are of doing online business in China. Terry McCarthy, CBS News, Beijing.